Think Realty Nation. It's your host, Avi Golhar, and uh, I would say regular contributor, co-host of the Power Play, Greg Rand, uh, is on the air with us as well. Greg, up, as Bobby? always, welcome to the show. Hey, hey. Thank All right. You. Today, we're talking about government intervention in the housing market. Uh, many of you thinking, well... Sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes uh, sometimes it's a bad thing. Sometimes it's more of a bad thing than a good thing. Sometimes it's more of a good thing than a bad thing. Greg, help me like get through the weeds on this. Right. Well, that's great. So the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? I think people would expect a free enterprise entrepreneur type like me and like you to want to resist and push back against it. And when this question came up recently, it was in the context of um, some things that were being done like Airbnb. Um, being outlawed in a mm-hmm. lot of places, which is, you know, neighborhoods complaining about people coming in and being transient in a neighborhood. But it also had a lot to do with um, kind of like when the cab companies said, we don't want no, we don't want no Uber around here. Right. So we have, we have a little bit of that going on. Yeah. And, and they it, said it, it just had, like that. We don't want no Uber. <laughs> we don't want <laughs> the no most Uber. grammatically incorrect sentence ever. <laughs> I'm not picking on t- cab the cab industry. Um, I just know they were they were they were not. Um, it was unequivocal. They were not happy. Uh, and sure. so, like Airbnb is an example. Yeah. HOAs that are heavy-handed, homeowners associations that are heavy-handed about investors owning property and getting in the way of people. These are all things you need to know. Um, environmental mandates: you have to put solar on your property. That kind of thing is catching. Um, yeah, it's catching, catching a little wind in California right now. Absolutely, a lot of new construction. It is. Yeah. It is, but you know what? What I want to draw, I want to bring everyone's attention to the government's role in the housing market and how powerful. One of the reasons why this market is so powerful. We talk a lot here about population trends and demand and those kinds of things, but I want to draw your attention to three things. One is that when you buy a piece of real estate in this country, you are, uh, if you get a loan, you're required to get title insurance. Okay. If you don't get a loan, you better get title insurance. And what they do with title insurance is they they research the chain of title. So everybody who's owned that property since the pilgrims came, that is on record at the local municipality. And when somebody comes along and buys it, all the old liens have to be cleared. All the old encumbrances have to be dealt with. And when you get the keys, you get clean title and you can get a fairly inexpensive insurance policy against that, which means... You pay a thousand or two for title insurance, and if someone does show up in five years and say, "Hey, wait a second, I have a mortgage on that property, I have a a judgment on that property," it's okay. Well, you're going to get paid if you have one, but the insurance company is going to pay it. That is really powerful. The idea that every time, like it's it's a brilliance in the design of our market, that every time properties change hands, they don't mandate it in between. They don't say, okay, we're going to make sure that every property in the country has clear title. They just wait for the person who wants to sell it to sell it, and the person who wants to buy it is going to require clear title. They're going to be represented right, and that's very, very big, and that happens because every single square mile of this country is governed by a local municipality. They've got the housing records in there. When you close on a property, you have to record your deed. You bring the deed down there. It gets recorded. That entire industry has now consolidated all of that data into one big, massive national housing database. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's still a national housing database that is verified every day by human beings on the ground who record that deed. Um, That's a very powerful thing. What it means is that you're not going to have your property taken from you after you buy it. Another example is the mortgage industry. Not everybody understands that if you you could go to, you know, Wells Fargo Bank, or Steve's Mortgage Company, or Quicken Loans. And the application process is pretty much the same. The information you have to provide is the same. The qualification standards are the same. Yes, the underwriting is the same pretty much. Yeah, the pricing is basically the same. Who's, you know, Quicken's going to try to do it faster and cheaper. The local guy's going to try to do it with more hands-on customer service. But one way or the other, people need to understand that the the housing market's resilience has to do with the fact that people can't afford to buy much sooner because it only requires a down payment, a credit score, and a job. And that is a government program. Fannie, Freddie, and the FHA are essentially government programs that were designed to promote home ownership. And what they gave us is ubiquity when it comes to financing. It's available to anybody who qualifies. It doesn't take you but five minutes online to figure out what you have to do to qualify. And it's designed to help you qualify when you're, you know, when you're ready for it. So that's another thing that allows you when you own property that you want to sell it, 
you have the knowledge, even if you don't know what to articulate it, it's out there that when you sell the property, somebody who wants to buy it has access to ready financing to acquire that. Government's involvement provided that. So for those of us, for, for those of us listening, they might be thinking, well, I look at the government and I don't want the government involved in my deals, right? But you kind of showcase that without it, we wouldn't have the very clear cut system holding title to property that we do today. And otherwise, it, we might as well start investing in other countries. I think uh, very recently you and I covered that on an international segment where you have different countries that it's very difficult to understand the clear chain of title, the clear chain of ownership for these properties, right? It's very, very difficult. Yeah, and it's ruinous. If one real estate, right. if your real estate port, if you spend your life building real estate, a real estate portfolio to, to live on in your old age and pass on to your kids, and somehow it goes sideways on you because of a chain of title issue or something to that effect, we don't have that here. Um, we have, we talked recently also about the hurricane. There are, Places in the Carolinas where you're required to get flood insurance. I own property in Charleston. I'm required to get flood insurance. There's no – that's an uninsurable thing, okay? <laughs> Buying that's real right. estate in Charleston that has flooded like five times in the last hundred years, it is uninsurable. The government mandates it and the government backs it up so an insurance company can actually sell it. So I was able – I am able to insure the uninsurable and if I get flooded, I get covered. And it's all because the government says we don't want to have our coastlines in the southeast be like a no man's land, right? We, mm -hmm. we don't want to have it be the only people that can actually live in Charleston, South Carolina, are ones that can afford to buy property and then have it taken away in a hurricane and lose it all. So they've they've done great things uh, in terms of being able to protect us and give us a kind of a level playing field with the rule of law underpinning it all. That's right. Um, so that we can play on the surface here and the rules are set and the league is in place and you can take your risks and you can win and you can lose, but... All depending um, on strategy. Yep. Yeah, and, and yeah. execution and, and, not, right. and not some unforeseen heavy hand of government taking it away or doing a sloppy job of, uh, of enforcing laws. Why is the MLS a good thing? MLS, okay, excellent question. So the this is a market that is extremely friction free. And what I mean is, if you're buying real estate, you today can find out almost everything on the market because of the MLS. You can figure out pretty quickly what these houses are worth. You can educate yourself on valuations. If you're selling your property, you know that you can hire any real estate company in town and that property will sell. You know what the market is worth and that does not happen overnight. The multiple listing service the industry of real estate gets picked on, and you know I pick on them on the show all the time, right? Because they, they're <laughs> easy to pick on. Yeah. I also come from that world, so it's like it's okay, right? I mean, but you and um, I also have a habit of uh, of picking on each other just because it's also easy. That's true, because <laughs> well, we love each other. Yeah, absolutely. But the, yeah, the um, even though you call me, would you call me bougie or something today? I I, not, I, I don't recall. <laughs> okay, we'll get, we'll get to that in another segment. Um, but this is a really powerful thing. I want people to think about this because realtors get kind of a silly rap of not being the most serious industry in the world, okay? And I come from that world, so take it as coming from a place of, you know, I care about you, but that's a fact, you can't deny it. But every real estate company in every town in America contributes all of their properties pretty much to the multiple listing service. They then draw on all of the properties contributed by everybody into that multiple listing service. And what it means is that there's ubiquity. I can walk into any real estate company and get access to everything. The MLS is governed by local boards of realtors that then report up to a national association of realtors. So when properties sell, what they sold for is also recorded into the multiple listing service. That has given us things like the Zillow's estimate and other automated valuation systems that give people the ability to know pretty much what a house is worth without having to even do any paperwork on it. The multiple listing service makes it so that when a buyer wants to find a property for sale, they don't have to go to every different real estate company to find out what's for sale. They're able to find their way to the property that makes sense for them. And the same benefit for a seller, your property finds the right buyer.